A huge weather pattern change will be coming to the United States over the next seven days, which is about to bring a big cool down to much of the United States with this relentless heat wave that's been ongoing for weeks now. Additionally, severe weather is about to ramp up again with damaging winds, hail, and even a few tornadoes being a possibility over the next few days. And lastly, the tropics are heating up very quickly as we now have a new area of development in the Gulf, which could end up impacting areas like Texas and Mexico, and then tropical storm areas. Aaron is beginning to intensify in the Atlantic Ocean, which is set to become our first hurricane of the season. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And currently, it's actually been pretty active back over in the Ohio Valley and through the southeast where we've had showers and thunderstorms ongoing for the last 12 to 24 hours. But look at this. The Great Plains are beautiful right now. It is hot, but there's not really much in the way of storms that will change though tonight and tomorrow as we are expecting the return of some severe weather for those in the Midwest and the Northern Plains. This will likely continue all the way through Saturday. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that will be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks and to look at that we're going to look at our jet stream and our mid-level flow and this one looks like right now generally speaking we actually do have a trough that is located back up in Canada which is going to help to produce the potential for some isolated to scattered severe weather which will begin today will go all the way through Saturday across the northern plains and the midwest this could aid the potential for some damaging winds hail and a low tornado risk but on the other hand further down to the south we got a big high pressure system that is going to continue to build this weekend which unfortunately will continue the heat wave but i do have some good news for you if you're back over in the midwest ohio valley or the northeast because as we go into the middle of next week high pressure is going to move very far back off to the west back over into the rockies and this is going to allow for northwesterly flow to come out of canada and if this all ends up happening we're going to be talking about at least a 10 to 20 degree drop in temperatures across the board for most areas in the Midwest and back into the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. And then beyond this, we're likely going to start to see our weather pattern get a little bit calmer. The temperatures will gradually warm up, I think, by the very last week of August. But we're going to start to see zonal flow kick right back in again. And this will limit the amount of severe weather that we see for the very last week of August. But that also does indicate that we'll probably start to see tropical storms and hurricanes becoming more of a concern near the United States as high pressure builds across the southeast. This can often be the steering factor when it comes to tropical systems. And I do really think that hurricane season, especially in the Atlantic Ocean, is about to ramp up very, very quickly. I think we're about to see probably multiple tropical storms before the end of the month. Might even see some hurricanes as well. So one of the best things that's going to come out of this big weather pattern change will be the temperatures dropping. But unfortunately, for the next seven days or so, we're going to be dealing with above average temperatures for most areas in the Great Plains all the way back through the East Coast. Below average temperatures will start to filter into areas along the West Coast, which is some good news. A lot of you guys need relief back over in California and also near Oregon. And eventually by the middle of next week, notice that there will be a cold pocket of air beginning to come out of Canada. This will really be felt mainly for Minnesota and Iowa back into New Hampshire and Maine. And also I do want to point out that this right here is actually what's going to end up being Hurricane Aaron, which most likely will stay away from the United States. But we're still keeping a very close eye on it as it could still meander further west. We're going to talk more about that here in a moment and then by the time we go into next weekend we're going to be dealing with at least most of the country being around average for temperatures there will be pockets of above average and below average temperatures but generally speaking we're going to be closer to average i think by next weekend so at least some relief is on the way these are the actual temperatures as we go into friday this week most areas will be into the 100s anywhere from south dakota back into dallas fort worth and in texas eventually as we go into monday and tuesday of next week temperatures will begin to fall across the midwest and back into the northeast this one looks like on Wednesday we got high temperatures in the 70s some 80s even a few 60s across many areas in Wisconsin and then back through New York and then by Thursday and Friday temperatures will continue to stay really nice across these areas and it'll also be drier so all in all a phenomenal weather pattern change is coming to much of the country as we go into the later half of next week now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days beginning with today which is Wednesday and we have a slight risk of severe weather in place back over in South South Dakota and northern Nebraska where we do have a chance of isolated damaging winds a little bit of hail and a low tornado risk there's also two marginal threats of severe weather in place which include about 52 million people majority of those are back over in the mid-Atlantic and across the northeast where I expect some isolated damaging winds this afternoon otherwise the threat of severe weather is low 
And then as we go into Thursday, the threat of severe weather will continue across the northern and central plains. The Storm Prediction Center has outlined a slight risk of severe weather, which includes areas like Fargo, where I do anticipate the threat of damaging winds and hail to be more elevated. There is also a chance for an isolated tornado or two, mainly going to be back over near Grand Forks, Fargo, and also near International Falls. So have a tornado action plan ready to go in multiple ways to receive warnings. There is a low chance of a live stream tomorrow. We may even have one on Friday or Saturday as well if those risks of severe weather do look more elevated. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live for these severe weather events. So here's the timing of severe weather beginning with what's happening today across the northern plains. We're expecting a few storms to fire off in western South Dakota sometime between 3 and 7 o'clock. The biggest concern will be damaging winds. There is a low tornado risk if any storm can get discreet and out in front of that cluster. But I think overall our tornado threat is going to be very low today. As we go into Thursday, the threat of severe weather is going to be a bit more conditional. It'll most likely not end up happening until sometime around sunset as well. This is the area that we need to keep an eye on. It is very conditional, though. There is going to be a cap in place, which basically means there is a lid on the atmosphere that'll be preventing storms from developing. But if that lid is essentially overcome, we may end up seeing the threat of severe weather. This particular model doesn't have really anything firing off until midnight to one in the morning. And by this point, if storms fired off this late, I would really expect no more than just some damaging winds and sporadic hail. The tornado threat would be near zero at that point. But if a storm were to fire earlier in the day, there is definitely more concern. On Friday, I do think there's a better chance of a more organized threat of severe weather, mainly across the upper Midwest and eastern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. This should be mostly during the mid to late afternoon and early evening with large hail, damaging winds, and an isolated tornado or two being a possibility. Definitely stay weather aware if you're near Duluth or anywhere in northern Wisconsin, just to the north of Wausau. There is definitely a chance of a live stream if that event does get a little bit more elevated in terms of the risk level. And then back over in the northeast, we are expecting some scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. These are going to be your typical springtime thunderstorms that will produce some downburst damaging winds anywhere from 50 to 65 miles per hour and perhaps up to quarter sized hail. But outside of that, not really expecting much in the way of a tornado risk. And then on Thursday, it'll basically be the same story, but mainly for southern New England and also near New York City, where we may also see the potential for some gusty winds around 40 to 60 miles per hour. There could be maybe one storm that produces a damaging wind threat. Now, the tropics are heating up very quickly across the Atlantic Ocean, and you might notice something different, but the National Hurricane Center has actually added a low chance of development back over near the Yucatan Peninsula into the Western Gulf, which is an area that we'll have to keep an eye on for a very low chance of a tropical depression or storm forming over the next couple of days. The reason why there's a bit more concern, though, about something like this is if you remember just about a month ago, we actually had a small and very weak tropical storm go right up into Mexico, weakened out, and the remnants of that went right into Texas and caused a major flooding event. I'm not saying that's going to happen this time, but obviously we do have to watch this very closely because if this were to make it up into Texas and there was enough moisture, it's definitely not impossible for us to have another flooding event back up there. So something we'll have to watch for over the next few days. This right here is Tropical Storm Aaron, which is forecasted to become a hurricane within the next 48 hours, and then eventually a major hurricane as it approaches Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles. It should just stay north of those areas, and then from there, this thing could still go basically basically anywhere it could go out to sea it may even try to track towards the united states and we'll talk more about here that here in a moment and then this right here is a very low chance of development just east of new england i really do not expect that to develop into anything but once again another area of development right now and this is the latest forecast on tropical storm Aaron, which is beginning to intensify again back over in the central atlantic ocean it was actually a bit weaker yesterday mainly because of the fact that it was going through colder water temperatures but it is no longer going through colder waters it is now moving into warm warm and almost boiling waters in the western Atlantic Ocean and eventually as we get closer to this weekend the National Hurricane Center does believe this will become a major hurricane which I do agree with now from here where is this exactly going to track well our code of uncertainty beyond the five to seven day time frame is obviously pretty large it could still go towards Florida it could curve up towards Bermuda it could go out to sea it may impact Bermuda might impact the east coast it also could make landfall somewhere in the United States but I do think it is a very high likelihood as of right now that this is going to turn back out to sea. It is not for certain as of right now, but the odds of this going to making landfall anywhere in the United States are basically about 5 to 10%. It's not a very high probability. With that said, if you're anywhere along the East Coast, you should be still staying weather aware, especially since this is still well over five days out for making landfall. And a lot of things can change between now and seven to 10 days out from now. And this is the latest spaghetti chart with all of our different ensemble members in the GFS model group. And this is what it looks like over the next few days. Pretty high 
consistency that this will be just staying to the north of Puerto Rico and the lesser Antilles, but tropical storm impacts are possible. And then back over in Bermuda, that's an area that we do have some confidence that we're going to at least see some sort of impacts there when it comes to storm surge, perhaps even hurricane impacts if this is to turn quick enough to the north as we go into this weekend and early next week. There are still a few models, though, and a few outliers that do indicate that this could get a little bit closer to the United States. And if this were to take more of a westerly path and it does end up not making landfall in the United States, but kind of skirts up the coast, there could be some storm surge, higher wave heights and some other problems as well. So as we get closer to this, getting closer to Puerto Rico and the lesser Antilles, we should have a much better idea of exactly where this is going to track. But I do want to mention again, if you're anywhere along the East Coast, you should be staying weather aware, monitoring the situation at least once a day, just checking on the latest weather forecast. Subscribe to our channel. We'll continue to provide you updates regarding Tropical Storm Aaron, which will become a major hurricane soon. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely have another video tomorrow, but if we do not, it'll be on Friday. So click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video.